Look at the Great Lakes in those photos that introduced our Great Lakes Now first Friday watch party today. And thanks to all of you for joining us. I'm Nick Austin, the new host of this watch party series. As you're watching on Facebook or YouTube right now, please tell us where you're joining us from. We love to see which part of the Great Lakes and sometimes the rest of the country that are represented here. And now for our lineup today, we're going to talk about getting out there on the Great Lakes. Fun things to do, cool, cool places to visit and to enjoy the lakes and also learn about them. We have some fun guests today, but before we bring them in, I would like to welcome all of our co-hosts and you, their Facebook audiences. Let's look at a map of them while I greet them and do let us know if you're in the chat watching on one of these channels. First, let's see our PBS partner stations. They're the blue points on the map. We've got Detroit Public Television, Milwaukee PBS, PBS Michiana WNIT, PBS Western Reserve in Youngstown, Ohio, WNMU TV, PBS in Marquette, Michigan, WPBS TV in Watertown, New York, WQLN in Erie, Pennsylvania. And we have media partners co hosting here as well. They're in red, and they are Circle of Blue, Planet Detroit, WDET 1019 FM, Detroit's NPR station, where incidentally I host a radio show, Soul Saturday, which you can catch, as it says, every Saturday night at 8 p.m. Eastern. We'll drop a link into the chat for you soul and music fans out there, even though it's not technically a Great Lakes show, I hear it does sound great on the water. But getting back to this program, we also have some great groups in Detroit that help people have fun and learn more about the Detroit River, which is, of course, part of the Great Lakes. They're in green on the map. We have the Belle Isle Conservancy, Belle Isle Nature Center, and last but not least, that green point way up in Winnipeg, Manitoba, is the IISD Experimental Lakes Area. Thanks to all of our co-hosts who bring us you, the audience, for this, because we like these watch parties to be interactive. We like questions from you, too, and they keep us on our toes. And we also learn from you about great places in the Great Lakes. So during this half hour program, please drop your questions or comments in the chat on Facebook and the pages where you are watching. Okay, on to the program. If you are a loyal First Friday Watch Party viewer, we're changing this up a bit. First, obviously, I'm hosting, and I've worked with Great Lakes now behind the camera doing monthly narration for a while now, but now stepping out in front on the camera to talk to you directly. But second, in this series, we're going to talk about places you can go to have fun around the Great Lakes region and where you can learn more. Let's bring in Great Lakes Now Program Director Sandra Svoboda to tell you more about that. Hi, Nick. Hi, Sandra. How are you? I'm happy. I'm happy to learn more about the Great Lakes, step out in front of the camera, and get to introduce people to you to tell them so much more about what we're doing here. Well, yes. Yeah. So after maps, which admittedly I made, but after maps and partners and introductions and shout outs to the audience, we are ready to talk about having fun out on the Great Lakes. That's what we're going to do in these first Fridays. We're going to travel around the lakes in this monthly series. We're going to get out and do things. We might see a few photos from my vacation. And we're going to meet the people that help us learn more about the environment and the critters and today the fish. Uh, that are in our great Great Lakes region. So, uh, Nick, if I could, I just want to welcome a few of the listeners. You asked them to tell us where we're from. We've got Mike from Belleville, Michigan, and Jerry Lynn from Colorado Springs, outside the Great Lakes, but uh, also wanted to be part of the show. And hi, Sherry from Detroit. I see you as well. Okay, Sandra, speaking of fun, you seem to have a lot more of it around the Great Lakes than, frankly, I do. I have to admit it. Tell me a little bit about your recent vacation. My recent vacation was fantastic. Well, first of all, it was we spent two weeks uh, go, doing a lap of Lake Superior, as I say. The first week was actually work. I met with our partner station, WNMU, and uh, we were traveling around, and I actually met one of our guests during that trip. So he'll be joining us in a moment. Um, but it was really, it was really, really great. Those are the photos in the intro there, and. 
um, we had a great time traveling around the lake and kind of seeing the places we put in our TV show and looking out at the water and knowing a little bit more about the issues because of my work here. Oh, well, that's great. Uh, the photos look awesome. I feel like I can kind of feel what it was like being there through that, living vicariously through you. But what advice do you have for people in general about traveling the Great Lakes? Oh, wait, how long is the show? A half hour? <laughs> I get a half hour to do this? No, I'm just kidding. Okay, my advice- Hit the high is... points. <laughs> my advice is the title of the program, Get Out There. You know, there's 40 million people that live in the Great Lakes region. The majority of them, of course, are in cities, but there's also, you know, within a two, three hour drive, there's some really great places to go. I'm not going to give away my secrets, the two oh. hours from Detroit and what there is, but you know, there's so many websites. And so we're hoping this first Friday series and content on our website and our social media channels, help people be tourists in their own region, so to speak. Very cool. Very cool. I also am a Great Lakes expert. I went to oh, Chicago. Where, where have you been, Nick? What are your favorite places? Uh, Chicago. It's fantastic. I hear there's a lake there. Uh, I saw it once. Um, I think <laughs> I may have is. driven through there Cleveland before at one point in time. Does that count? Okay. Yes. Yes. So these are, yes, we're looking at the Chicago. Style. This is Chicago. As a, yes. as a clear embracing the waterfront that sail GP. It's an international sailing professional sailing series. So we thank them for those photos, but that's exactly what we want to do in these watch parties is get into some of the great things that are going around on around the lakes and how to enjoy them. But Nick, you're only going to cities. Why are we only getting you to cities? So let's, uh, let's learn more about some of the remote places and let's bring in that person I talked about that I met during my vacation. Absolutely. I understand that is Tyler and Tyler, you've been brought in to join us. Tyler, can you say hi to everybody? <laughs> hey everybody. How's it going? Yeah, there it is. Yeah. So Sandra, where'd you meet Tyler? How did you come I met across Tyler that? on his day job uh, <laughs> at the Porcupine Mountain State Park Visitor Center? Do we have photos of that? I That's think, it. Somewhere? It's there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there's our. Oh my gosh. That's, <laughs> that's our fantastic selfie. Not sure I'm showered, but okay. So you that's the visitor to center that. there at the Porcupine Mountain State Park. We actually did not have a okay pro travel tip. You asked for advice. Make reservations. The Great Lakes are very popular. So we did not have a campground reservation. So while my husband was on his smartphone outside, I did it the old-fashioned way and went in and asked Tyler for some advice. So I'm going to let him take that over now and tell us about his pro tips about the Porcupine Mountains up there in Lake Superior. Awesome. So as everybody said, um, I'm Tyler. We're located up at the Porcupine Mountains. The uh, company I work for is uh, Simple Adventures. Um, we are originally based in the Detroit area, um, but we recently started to do more work around the state. Um, what I do is I help manage along with a team of employees, uh, three separate locations that we have at the Porcupine Mountains, where we offer everything that you can imagine that you might need in the area to complete any of the fun activities that we have, whether that's hiking, camping, backpacking, kayaking, and all of the different things. It's, uh, absolutely wonderful place to visit and there's a plethora of different activities for everyone to do very cool tyler and uh sandra introduced you as being at the porcupine mountains sounds kind of sticky to me i've never been out there and i'm sure a lot of our audience hasn't either but now that i'm talking to you if you're in the audience especially all of you out there and we've got people who are signing in by the way kim in Ravina, Ohio. How are you doing out there? As well as Mitchell from Fort Wayne. Uh, thanks for joining us. That's fantastic. Jamie from Southfield as well. But uh, you're talking about the Porcupine Mountains, which we had a photo up, and I've heard they're called the Porkies, which is yes. even more interesting to me. But uh, can you help me understand a little bit more about the mountains and why I and the people watching should visit them? Yeah, definitely. So the, as everyone knows, there's not really a, a large amount of mountains like you get out in the West um, and a lot of those Vista style views um, that everybody kind of really wants to hit for. So the Porcupine Mountains, we offer a ton of hiking. That's probably one of the biggest draws there, especially Lake of the Clouds. Um, Lake of the Clouds is a beautiful area that you're able to it's super accessible to anybody in all ages whether you're 
you know, you have six children and your youngest is four. It's only a 300 foot walk from the parking area to the outlook of Lake of the Clouds. To the left and the right of Lake of the Clouds are two separate trail systems that have varying degrees of difficulty for everyone that really could want to go hiking. Um, and so as you can see in some of these photos here, it offers a beautiful view of the actual lake itself, which is located between two sets of ridge lines that were created on the escarpment. Um, and up to the left is one of the top views. This one looks like it was taken here from the Big Carp River Trail. Um, absolutely beautiful trail system that leads you along the escarpments and then finally down to the Big Carp River that feeds into Lake of the Clouds itself. Um, and to the left of Lake of the Clouds is the Escarpment Trail, which happens to also be one of the highest rated trails that we have up in the Porcupine Mountains as far as all trail systems and any of your main review types um, that you could be finding any trail systems on. And that one offers view after view after view, taking you up and down and looking at the gorgeous vistas that are overlooking Lake of the Clouds from different angles along that escarpment that you see stretches out about roughly four uh, miles on that trail. I mean, those are some really gorgeous photos and really interesting information to hear from. Looks like you have fans also, Tyler, as Jocelyn uh, says, hey to you. Hey, Tyler. Hey, Jocelyn. How you How's doing out there? And uh, a hi to Tim also out in the Shush Mountain and Joanne in St. Clair Shores. A little bit closer to over this way also. Thank you for tuning in, Joanne. Uh, but you mentioned that you're part of an organization that helps uh, run some of these uh, different events. Can you tell us more about different activities Simple Adventures runs at different state parks around the region? Yeah, so we offer a wide variety um, of one of our main items would be water sports. We offer stand up uh, paddleboard rentals and guided kayaking trips and kayak rentals across the majority of the state parks that we run through. Um, some of those state parks mainly located right now within um, Michigan would be uh, the Lake St. Clair Metro Park where we do river run and guided trips. Um, in the Porcupine Mountains here, we offer a sunset tour where we kayak out into the sunset. As you can see here, this is a very good view of what that might look like if you took one. Um, and then we're paddling back under the ambient light after the sun has settled and really just enjoying the scenery of the Porcupine Mountains lit up by nature itself as it was intended to be viewed. Um, we also have a bunch of other state parks downstate like uh, Belle Isle State Park, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with being located in Detroit. Um, we have Newburgh Lake over by Livonia, Michigan, uh, Camp Dearborn, where we do kayak and stand up paddleboard rentals. Um, we have New Baltimore as well, um, and Interlochen State Park too, where we also offer kayak rentals and stand up paddle boards. And Belle Isle, we also do some bike tours out of as well to kind of see the park. Well, it's great to hear, to hear you're covering so much of the region. And we're going to drop a link in the chat uh, so that people can easily find you. Uh, and I understand uh, that you have a little bit of footage. I think we may have seen some of that from a recent kayak trip that yes. you uh, played as well. We're going to roll that for you right now so that people can learn a little bit more about kayaking and my expertise. Because uh, I think, uh, to be honest, Tyler, the last time I went kayaking, I may have been 10 years old. Uh, the Great Lakes Now producers, they keep threatening to make me go back in one. Uh, so... For novices like me and newcomers, can you tell us what we need to know about kayaking on Lake Superior or elsewhere? And is it different to kayak uh, on different lakes? Yeah, it's 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 definitely different to kayak on different lakes. Lake Superior is going to be a much larger and more adventurous route normally than if you're going to go on a smaller inland lake that doesn't experience a lot of winds. However, that doesn't mean that Lake Superior is any bit... In more or less accessible than an inland lake where you have a kayak launch. It's more about preparation and, you know, understanding um, your weather that you're going out into is going to be one of the biggest portions of kayaking out on the Great Lakes is ensuring that you have the correct weather and the correct gear to go out on it. And as long as you have those things, it, 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 it is an enjoyable time. And it's something that anybody can do. Definitely. Um, I I've had groups as young as, you know, 10 years old who've never kayaked before and they're getting out on the lake with their parents for the first time. We're teaching them how to paddle in and out of the shoreline of the Porcupine Mountains and really giving them that 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 experience of what it's like to be on Lake Superior and 
and um, it's definitely definitely for everyone. Oh, so yeah, Tyler, Tyler, you, I, I, Tyler, I was sorry, Nick. Tyler, I was hoping you were going to do this watch party from a kayak. You know, <laughs> camera, like end of the paddle, switch back and forth from a helmet cam on the on the kayak. Oh, that would that would be phenomenal. Maybe 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 someday we can get that going. I, I would love to do something like that, but might need yeah. the internet connection to clear up our. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You well, need- meanwhile, Stacy is coming in from West Bloomfield. Hi, Stacy. Thanks for joining us. We have a comment from Tim Wiley who says, if you've never been to Northern Michigan, you have to go. It's beautiful. I agree, Tim. So is the rest of Lake Superior. I mentioned our I mentioned our vacation doing a lap there. Definitely. So, so Tyler, while we have you here and your expertise, what's the biggest thing people ask you about the Great Lakes? Um, about the Great Lakes in general, um, a lot of the times I get asked about uh, water temperature on Lake Superior when we're going out on, on kayaking hikes, whether or not it's going to be safe. And and um, a lot of the time, the answer is yes, it's, it is. It's more about understanding, uh, you know, and, and equipping yourself with the knowledge before you go out onto the lake. Um, another big question, not necessarily around the Great Lakes, but more on the Porcupine Mountains that I get asked about is if we have bears in the area, which, spoiler, yes, we do, but they yeah. are, uh, they're not, they're just as afraid of you as you are of them, so. Yeah, see, Sandra, I also found out they have bears in Chicago, so, you know, don't oh. tell me about my Great Lakes trip. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 Nick. Real bears, not mediocre football team. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get some heat from some of the audience, audience for that. Uh, okay. in, well, in driving around the area, though, I, I do want to touch on this point because I've seen a lot of kayaks on the top of cars uh, sometimes. Uh, and also, I don't know, are they putting those out on the Detroit River? Uh, I, I kind of want to know a little bit more about um, what's going on there. Sandra, have you seen these kayaks that I'm talking about that are on these cars? When you were up north, did you see a lot of kayaks? So many kayaks. I think it's okay. like the new super popular sport. A lot of stand up oh. paddle boards, but really more kayaks around the Great Lakes. They are on the Detroit River. There are the rentals Tyler mentioned on Belle Isle. And actually, there's more going on in Lake Erie. We have a story on our website. It actually posted this morning from our writer, James Prophet. So it's greatlakesnow.org. Uh, producer Tammy, do we have that website? Do we have that queued up? Or do I just need to send everybody to our website? GreatLakesNow.org, and there's a piece about fishing from kayaks um, out on Lake Erie. So people are really, here we go, people are really using these these uh, these boats in a lot of different ways. So, yeah, there it is. Isn't that pretty? It looks like that every time you go, right, Tyler? It is beautiful. And I, I just want to say, for anybody who's never gotten a chance to experience the views of a kayak from the middle of any of the Great Lakes, take that opportunity get out on the water and do it because it's such a different experience than going river kayaking that it's it's definitely a must see just like you see in this picture you get this perfect glass all the way around you and it's Mm. it's really hard to describe without actually going out and doing it yourself so i highly recommend to any of our audience to you know get out there and, and 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 start kayaking and really experiencing the waterways in your area yeah that's great. So um, if anybody has any questions, we're going to keep Tyler around. So if anybody has any questions about kayaking, uh, put them in the chat and we'll get to them. But uh, Tyler, that was great because speaking of the views from the kayaks, the ones you cannot see, Nick, what can you not see when you're sitting in a kayak? That's part of the experience. That's part of the lake. Fish? Fish. Fish, which is our introduction for Amanda Murray, the senior aquarist at Belle Isle Aquarium. Hi, everyone. Hey, hey, Amanda. It's great to have you back here on uh, with us at Great Lakes now. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. Okay, Amanda. So as Sandra was mentioning, when I see the water, I mostly think about what's in it. But I'm not a fish expert like you, so I don't know everything that's going on around there. I have heard there's no sharks in the Great Lakes, but uh, as we're talking about kayaking with Tyler... Can you give us, for example, what kind of fish are in these waters with us while we kayak? Yeah, so in the Great Lakes, we're freshwater, so we don't have any sharks here, but we do have a lot of different variety of fish. In fact, my favorite fish at the aquarium are our Great Lakes fish, such as bass, bluegill, walleye, perch, sturgeon, um, are all examples of fish that you can find in the Great Lakes, including um, right off the island here. 
All right, so basically what I'm picking up here is I don't have to be concerned with any of these critters trying to eat me, which makes me happy. But what else do you think people don't know about the Great Lakes fish that they should know? Um, well, I think um, I really enjoy snorkeling in the Great Lakes. And most people, when they think of snorkeling, they think the Caribbean. But you can see so yeah. many things with snorkeling out in front of a dock. And the fish are actually very curious. So if you sit real still, sometimes they'll come up and look at you. So I think um, expanding yourself and actually snorkel and, and see the fish in their natural environment. One of the things that we're doing with these watch parties now is helping people learn more about where they can learn more about the Great Lakes. So can you tell me about your aquarium and the Great Lakes collection that you guys have? Yeah, so we have a whole section dedicated to our Great Lakes fish. In fact, right now I am in a space you normally can't see. This is our basement where we store a lot of our Great Lakes fish behind me. I have bass, walleye, uh, trout, crappie, which are my personal favorite fish. So um, we have them all on display as well that you can come see at the aquarium. We're open Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. All right. Uh, and as we're talking about fish, Sandra, I want to bring you back in here because I have been to your house. I've seen all of those refrigerator magnets that you have from the places you've been. Uh, are there any other Great Lakes aquariums in that collection? There are. I mean, now, Amanda, rest assured, I have a Belle Isle magnet, Belle Isle Aquarium magnet. Don't worry. About for that. In the collection. But yeah, you know, there are several other aquariums around the Great Lakes. Some of them are right on the water, so there are really cool settings. Um, we've actually partnered with the Brockville Aquatarium. That's on the St. Lawrence Seaway in Ontario. Uh, they have a great collection, including um, otters and some other mammals there. Everybody probably knows the Shed Aquarium, Nick, your city, Chicago. Um, <laughs> the, sh the Shed there. Oh, yeah. So there. Oh, boy. Yes, we went uh, <laughs> this video again. Uh, we went to the Shed Aquarium for a shoot really early on, and I could not resist the sturgeon tank. So you can actually um, that's not the sturgeon. That's me. But there are the fish. Uh, you can actually pet the sturgeon at the Shed Aquarium, and you can also pet the sturgeon um, up there in Duluth, I think, there we go. That's my friend Chuck petting the sturgeon in Duluth. Um, so it's really great that these aquariums not only have a, a, tons of exhibits, um, I didn't load all the photos that I have of those because I am a museum nerd, but you know, you can really get there and people can get hands on with the fish and really make it a memorable experience. So I'll let Amanda talk about what they do at the Belle Isle Aquarium that helps people get more in touch maybe not literally with Great Lakes fish. Go ahead, Amanda. Yes, so we have uh, many exhibits that you can actually come see and uh, interact with the fish. So we do have sturgeon here. They are very young sturgeon, um, but we have sturgeon as well as, this is a largemouth bass that is fender. Um, there is drawing on the tank because I used to do that during uh, COVID um, when we were closed to enrich the fish. So he liked when I drew on the tanks, he liked to follow me. So that's why you see that. <laughs> so other right, than well, that, we have, cool. and this is another bass. Yeah. Go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. Please oh, continue. I was say that. Oh, I could talk about fish all day. Um, the bass <laughs> that you see on exhibit here, this is Princess. Princess is currently behind me though, because she uh, didn't get along with her tank mates. Um, so she's kind of on a timeout, um, but she's in a great space here and we'll bring her back up on exhibit soon. That's There's our tank mates or walleye. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say, while we have you uh, explaining all of these wonderful things about the fish that people can see out there, if you do have any questions, remember all of you out there watching, please feel free to drop those in the chat and we will ask them of our experts today. But I want to let you continue with what you were discussing. Go ahead, please. Oh, I was just going to say these are walleye, a uh, popular fisher, fishing um, species that you can fish off the island and then come into the aquarium and see what they look like um, underwater. So, I mean, these are some of my favorite types of fish. They're just super uh, interactive and really, really neat to watch. And there she is. <laughs> Very good. Now, I do want to say, uh, as I uh, before we wrap up here, that uh, any city in the Great Lakes that will have me, Sandra, is my city. All right. I love my Great Lakes. <laughs> this is why I'm doing that. This, I learn so much more 
and help exactly. everyone out there learn more also. That's what we're going to do in this series, travel around the Great Lakes. So we're, yeah, we are looking for suggestions from the audience as well. What's your favorite, what place should we visit virtually in these watch parties? And what else do you want to learn about the Great Lakes? I mean, we could have Amanda on every month, but, uh, you know, sorry, Amanda, we can't do that. <laughs> um, but yeah, as we're looking at some more pictures from around the region, um, we do, you know, we're, we're, we're hoping the audience will help us out by telling us some of their stories and what they want to know about the lake. So let me give that back to Amanda and ask her, what are the, what are the biggest questions you get from people at the aquarium, kids, adults, everybody in between about the ecosystem, the fish and the Great Lakes? Uh, usually people ask me, um, you know, what my favorite fish is. But otherwise, about the Great Lakes, usually I get asked, are there any dangerous fish in the Great Lakes? Um, I mean, we do have musky that can get fairly large, but there's nothing that's going to hunt you down um, or anything like that. So uh, that's probably the biggest question that I would get. Well, very cool. I mean, I know what I've learned today. I've learned that apparently I need to go kayaking again. Now I'm a little bit older. Need to go to Belle Isle Aquarium. I can get out on the water without fear that I'm going to end up in a Jaws movie. So that makes me happy as well. And uh, I look forward to learning more from you. In fact, for everybody out there who's watching right now, if you have wonderful places in the Great Lakes area that you want us to cover, think that we should know more about, whether you're an expert at it or you're someone who wants to learn some more, please feel free to get a hold of us and let us know that information also. In fact, Sandra, what's the best way that people can get in contact with the show to give us that information? Uh, they can hit us up on Twitter. They're always on there. It's Great Lakes Now on Twitter. You can put questions in the chat of this video on whichever Facebook page you're watching on. We have people that look at those questions and we respond. So if you're watching this later, not live, and you think of some questions, still put them in there and we will look for them. And hopefully uh, you'll have some good tips for us because the best magic comes from the people who are out there experiencing it and making it with their own families uh, as they travel around the lakes. Absolutely. Before we get out of here, though, uh, we did have Tyler on here as well as Amanda. I want to let you guys jump back in and first thank you for coming by here. Anything you want to let our audiences know before we get out of here? I'm going to start with you, Tyler. Um, one thing I would let like to let the audience know definitely is come on up to the Porky's, rent a kayak and experience the Porcupine Mountains in a way that isn't as normal as going up to Lake of the Clouds. And um, the coastline of the Porky's is just as beautiful as the interior. And it gives you a great vantage point, like I was saying earlier, of Lake Superior in a whole new way that is definitely not nearly as common. That's fantastic. Anything from you, Amanda? Um, I would just say to come visit us at the Belle Isle Aquarium and see the fish that you may go fishing for or that you're under the water up close and personal and get that experience. It's awesome. I'd like to thank the team that makes these watch parties possible as well as both of you. But right now, I want to thank our co-hosts as well as they are the ones who truly allow us to do this and bring you this wonderful information. As we show you that map again, there are the PBS stations, public radio, environmental groups, and other co-hosts around the Great Lakes. Our team here is Mila Murray, Anna Seisling, Lana Katardi, Tammy Winsell, and Colleen O'Donnell. And mostly a thanks to you, our audience. Please let us know in the chat what topics you'd like to know more about as you plan your Great Lakes adventures. Until then, we will see you next month.